Hi guys, we're doing another home exercise tutorial video. Today I'm going to look at standing and floor core moves. So moves that are for the core is basically abdominals, bottom, lower back, sides of the torso, anything that is kind of your, your trunk muscles including uh, bottom here as well. Um, so first of all we're, we're going to use a resistance band again. In the description that accompanies this video there will be a link to an email address so if you're part of the exercise referral scheme or any of the partner or associated classes then you can click on that email address and you can order yourself a free exercise referral band to aid your home exercise. So the main thing, uh, it's a really common thing for people to say, Rob, I want to improve my core strength. Um, and everyone talks about crunching, so crunching on the floor or this motion all the time. Crunches may have their place depending on reason for referral, of course, I'm talking uh, from a general perspective here. Um, but there are actually many other ways that you can work your core really well. And I'm going to show you just a few. I'm going to show you four moves now. So this will depend on everybody's individual house and where they live. But with this resistance band here, I'm very lucky to have these funky looking beams in my living room. Uh, if you haven't got these, it may be that there's something else um, on the, the banister of, of stairs or there may be, you know, something that's appropriate that you can tie this or wrap this band around. So I'm going to wrap it around the beam here. Fantastic. I would recommend using a, a place where the, the band isn't going to slide up. It all depends on the band that you're using. This one is really sticky, and as long as I keep it level and my technique's good, that's not going to slide up. So what we're doing is... We've got it wrapped around the beam, the band here, equal tension either side of the band. I'm just going to walk away from the wall here, from the beam, and I'm going to face straight onto the camera. So there's clearly tension in the band. Keep a good grip here. You might say I've got underhand grip, overhand grip. It might be that you want to lace the fingers to together, uh, together, whichever grip feels most natural for you, keeping those wrists nice and neutral. The main thing as well is keep these shoulders down. You don't want one shoulder to come up. All the posture points that we've been talking about. Now, all I'm gonna do is turn little core rotations from side to side. Notice how my whole body moves as one. I'm a little bit slower as I return to the beam. When the hard work is taking place, I'm gonna feel this in and around the abdomen and the side, the obliques here. There may be a little movement at my hips. You'll notice that it's not outrageous. You'll notice that um, if you are 12 o'clock, and this is, uh, for me, this is five uh, past the hour, and this is five to the hour, that can be my range of motion. Just dropping the elbows to my side. If I show you side on here, it's all the posture points again. Uh, watching those videos, you'll probably notice a lot of repetition, but it's good to repeat this. So if I'm, if I'm turning, with my bottom out, that's going to crunch my lower back. I don't want to be hunched over either as well. So for this one here, it's tucking the tailbone under the shoulders, making sure that my shoulders are level, lightly rolled back, floating at the side of my rib cage, and I'm turning my body all as one. Probably one of the most important things here is keeping, making sure those ribs don't escape, so you're just lightly clamping them down. So this is a fantastic move. You do this on the left and you do this on the right hand side. Um, as long as you have been cleared for any um, twisting or turning moves, of course. Another move that you can do actually in a similar position, which is really, really good for core, um, and it adds a different element of core strength in here. There's no nicer term to use, so I'm just going to have to use the technical term here. I can't think of anything else. So if I have the tension in the band, my shoulders are level, I'm holding this directly in front of me, all the posture points are in check, I step back a little bit from the band so I'm behind the band, um, I'll show you this way first, and then what we can do is move our arms out so now 
the, um, the band is further away from the midline of the body. And what the band wants to do, don't do this, but what the band wants to do is bring me back this way. So now actually, it's my core muscles, if I've got all those posture points in check, that are trying not to let the band turn me this way. You can still clamp down a little bit on those ribs, those lower ribs. You can, if you want, move the arms forward and back. But if you notice that you're starting to go a little bit wobbly, then you just need to recheck that form. It's a little bit more of an advanced move, this, so don't worry if you don't get it straight away. But I like to share these tips. So it's a, it's a more of a stabilization uh, movement there so you're trying not to twist your body in the way that the band wants to bring you once again doing both sides um, I'm being very general on my advice in these videos because it's going out to a wide group of people so I would say um, you want to be performing three to four times through sets 10 to 15 repetitions on each side to a point where you feel the muscles are getting warmer where the muscles are uh, feeling like they're being challenged a real simple phrase is I can feel that the muscles are working Okay, I'll show you just a couple more moves You can do uh, with your band You can do a side bend Which is isolating the obliques which is just the side of your torso here So you'll notice like some previous videos the resistance band is out in front of me. I step on the band the more I step into the band, or the more my grip travels down the band, the more tension in the band, the harder it becomes. With this one here, all the common points, tucking the tailbone in, making sure that my shoulders are rolled back at the side of my rib cage. And what I'm gonna do is very slowly just travel one arm down my side, and then come back up with a little bit more purpose. What we don't want to see is a hip escaping. Oh wow, look at my range, because we're, we're breaking form. So keep those hips in. If it's too easy, grab a little bit further down the band, adjust, nice and slow on the way down. You don't have to go the whole way to the floor. Nice and slow, see how your body feels. Same reps and sets that we talked about before, and obviously both sides. The last move, well, actually, you could, if you didn't have a resistance band or you didn't order a resistance band, we can go for um, your tin or your home dumbbell. And we have the exact same motion here. A little bit slower on the way down, a little bit more purposeful on the way up. The final move I'm gonna show you is on the floor. Don't do this if you haven't been cleared, but on the floor, exercise, of course, that goes with without saying, you could say, but I, I like to mention it. So with this one here, this is a great um, core exercise for your bottom, for your glutes. It's seen in a lot of physio. The hip bridge, I would say use an exercise mat, but the hypocrisy is strong here, so it's my own fault if I bruise my, my tailbone. So basically the move that we've got Bring your feet out wide so your knees are wider than your hips. You can have your arms on your floor, just uh, on the floor for a little bit of balance. The main thing here is when you're coming up, before you come up, just put the small of your back into the floor, not too much, just a little bit, so your abdominals contract, so we're not putting unnecessary pressure in the lower back. And then from there, you just lift up as far as you can, we're all gonna be at different ranges, but you don't go beyond this downward diagonal line where the knee and the hip joints are in line. You can hold there for a little bit, feel the tension, squeeze the bottom, slowly coming down, and my advice would be adjust those abdominals before every lift, making sure that you're not pushing through the head or pushing through the neck, because that's a very vulnerable area. Same with sets and reps, as we talked about before. If you want to, you can pass a band through here, around your legs, just make sure it's not cutting into your legs, make sure it's comfortable, make sure we've got a safe grip. And now, we've got tension, a little bit more tension in the hips and the bottom. 
So it just adds a little bit more resistance in the move. Everything else is the same. If we haven't got a resistance band, and the body weight version is too easy, is the cushion. It's nice and soft, it's not gonna be uh, pressing in on anywhere uncomfortable, on any joints or anything. And it's the same thing, again, just a light hold of the cushion, engage those abdominals, don't push through the neck, don't worry if you can't come up to optimal range, but don't go beyond that. Squeeze the bottom, slow on the way down, reset your stomach muscles before each repetition. And that's working the big glute muscles there, your bottom muscles, which are the largest surface area of muscles, usually largest single muscle there in the body. Fantastic.